Now that the sample chips and glass slides we epoxied have had a chance to cure overnight, they are ready to be taken to the cutoff saw where we will remove most of the chip from the slide, leaving only a thin layer, approximately two millimeters thick. Once the equipment has been powered on, the vacuum chuck should be inspected to make sure it is clean and free from debris. Otherwise, the mounted slide may not stay firmly affixed to the vacuum chuck during cutting. Having verified that the chuck is clean, we will go ahead and mount the vacuum chuck onto the guiding rods. Next, take a moment to inspect the surface of the glass slide to make sure it is also clean and free from any dust, debris, or dried epoxy. During the epoxying process, it's not unusual to occasionally end up with some dried epoxy on the slide. This will prevent a tight, firm seal between the slide and the vacuum chuck, so any epoxy will need to be removed. A razor blade works well for this and can be used to easily remove any dried epoxy that you find on the surface of your slide. If the slide is clean, it helps to get the surface of the slide wet before taking it to the vacuum chuck, as this will help create a better seal, same as we did when we frosted the slides. Next, position the slide on the vacuum chuck, and when ready, activate the vacuum pressure. Before proceeding, make sure there is enough pressure to hold the sample chip securely on the vacuum chuck, and adjust if necessary. On the geoform, adjusting the vacuum pressure to around 400 pounds per square inch is usually sufficient to hold the slide during the cutoff process. With the slide and chip firmly attached to the vacuum chuck, Sarah will close up the splash guards and switch the water flow on the geoform from the grinding side to the saw blade side before powering on the saw. Once the saw has been activated, Sarah will begin pushing the sample into the saw blade. As with the rock saw, you should push forward with enough force to cut through the rock chip, but not so much to cause unnecessary strain on the saw blade. Similarly, the appropriate amount of force and the time to complete the cut will vary depending on the hardness of your rock sample. When the cut is complete, Sarah will turn off the saw blade and the water flow and retrieve the rock chip that has been cut away from the glass slide. You should save these cutoff chips as a backup because thin sections are occasionally ruined during the final stages, no matter how careful you are during the final grinding process. Even if all goes well, they may also be polished and used to create additional thin sections or saved as a reference chip to accompany the finished thin section. Finally, carefully pull the vacuum chuck away from the saw and secure the glass slide with your hand before turning off the vacuum pressure. The slide is now easily lifted away from the vacuum chuck and set aside until we're ready to begin the final grinding stage.